All right. Welcome back to The View from the Mount, where we talk about real-life issues through a biblical lens. I'm Matt, and across from me, playing the air drums, as always, is Jason Cole. I'm joining here. Me. All right. So today's episode, uh, we're going to kind of shift gears from the last time, and we are going to talk about the gospel today. It seems like a, a good thing to talk about. Uh, it does on a Christian-based podcast, it, right? It actually, you know, when we say it, it sounds kind of funny. Like, we're going to talk about the gospel. Yeah. But, but really, it, it's a little bit more than that. Sure. Uh, I, I think this is a neglected issue in the church, surprisingly. Yeah, I, I think we fall into the trap sometimes of just assuming that people have a good handle on on the basic stuff. But I think the gospel even goes way deeper than just being some basic thing. It's It has to be what drives us all the time and everything that we yeah, let, do. So let, let's define our term Sure. Uh, here. When we're talking about the gospel, maybe it'd be best. Uh, we could use 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. right? I write these things to you as a first importance, then... Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. That is the, the core of the gospel, or we could say even a little bit better, it's God's plan of redemption for us, the whole process, the whole story of a lost person being saved. Right, and, and I know there's maybe some confusion with different people because there are some books of the Bible we refer to as the gospel. There's also gospel music. There's also gospel music, but when we talk about the gospel of Christ, it is, it is this, that he died and was buried and rose again uh, for the purpose of the forgiveness of our sins and the redemption of humankind. And so that's kind of what we're focusing on. And so we've kind of got some different little subtopics we've kind of loosely mapped out for today and kind of try to cover some ground on this. And so, you know, once we've defined this, what is the gospel, maybe we should be able to separate that from what is not the gospel. Correct. Uh, there are other important things besides mm -hmm. the, the message of the gospel. There's doctrine that's important that we want to get right, but not every doctrine is equated with the gospel. Right. And sometimes those things become even elevated over the importance of the gospel. And without the gospel, none of that stuff really means anything. Yeah. And where the rubber hits the road for me is like if we're talking to somebody and we're uh, – say we're talking to an unbeliever and we're sharing the gospel, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we're sharing every doctrine. So there's some things that are not prerequisites to understanding, receiving, and obeying the gospel – uh, and, and we should be aware that this has been a hard thing for me to I accept, that there are some doctrines that are not gospel doctrines uh, that aren't barriers to somebody obeying the gospel. Right, because the scripture tells us that the gospel is God's power unto salvation. And so right. that means everything else isn't the power unto salvation. And so if you've got someone who's lost, we can't waste time debating with them over unessential things if until they've accepted the gospel. And then sure, teach that stuff. You know what the, the cool thing about when we talk about the message of the gospel, it is simple and it's profound. Yeah. It's, it's uh, something someone can learn day one uh, as they uh, hear about Jesus, but it's something that we're always learning about yeah, for the I know and understand the gospel in a deeper and more profound way than I did 22 years ago when I obeyed the gospel. Sure, and it's a difficult thing I think for us to really wrap our heads around. It's easy to say Jesus died for your sins, but that has so many shades and layers of of meaning under it. And and the and the more you study and the more you grow, the more you understand that, the more it ought to just blow us away. Absolutely, I I love that point, Matt. That if we're not moved by this, mm -hmm. that it has to do something to us beyond intellect. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that the gospel is a, a objective propositional truth. Yep. I, I believe obeying that, uh, the preached word of the gospel is propositional. I believe that. But it, but it includes this stirring constantly. I think about the God. Every time I think about the depth of it, Yeah, it does something to me. And if it doesn't, like if this doesn't stir you what Jesus has done for you, yeah. a couple things might be at work. One is that you don't understand the depth of the penalty of your sin. Mm -hmm. And second, you can't understand the uh, amazing concept of what substitutionary death is. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have some sort of uh, heart reaction, some sort of emotion reaction, no, you, don't, you uh, don't get it. You don't have to fall down and cry and no, weep but, and wail. But it should we affect all, you. We emote differently. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get that. But this, Man, it ex every time I talk about this, it excites me every time. It's not yeah. old news. It's good news. It's not old news. Yeah, and, and we should clarify, 
understanding of the gospel comes first, and then th this emotional response should follow if, if you understand it and you believe it. We shouldn't try to be led to this by our emotions. That's not some evidence that God's speaking to us or anything like Absolutely. that. But, but this is such an incredible thing that, that we were totally lost in our sin. We, we were under a death sentence. We had no hope whatsoever. And this is the news that we have been redeemed by Christ's blood. That's amazing. And, and that should elicit a response once we grab hold of that. And, and that's what we're called to speak, right? right? When Jesus commissioned his disciples, mm -hmm. it was go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. And it was what Paul said is of first importance. Mm -hmm. And and so not only that, you know, just a, a couple of things when I read that passage in 1 Corinthians 15. One is Paul says, I'm going to remind you of the gospel. Yeah. We need to be constantly reminded of the gospel. Mm -hmm. But the second thing that kind of piqued my interest in when you were talking is that the message of the gospel is not just that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. It's that he died for our sins. Yeah. I think that's an important distinction. Absolutely. Because that's amazing if he just did that, but it, it wasn't you know, some sort of magic trick. He, there was a purpose behind it, and, and that was the redemption of humankind. He took the penalty that, that we were owed, that we, that we earned, took it on himself, and, and also the fact that he, he rose from, from the dead, that, that tells us that there is something after this. We have a sure hope of an afterlife because he's already right. gone before us. And I love that idea that the two problems that we have, the two things that keep us out of heaven, sin and the grave are dealt with, with the gospel. Yeah. Jesus's death takes care of our sin problem. His resurrection takes care of our grave problem. Now, that's good news any day of the week. Yeah. And, and I just think it's incredible. The more you study that there's so much evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. And, and that of course, just confirms everything else that he claims about himself. You know, if he raised himself from the dead, he is who he says he is. Absolutely. And so that's, that's really the foundation of our faith. Do, do you think that maybe sometimes we run the risk of thinking that that is uh, so elementary that it is day one message that we stop talking about it in the church. Yeah, I think I think we do that. I think we we always think there's bigger fish to fry. We sort of just assume people have got that basic stuff down. And I think we expect a certain amount from from fellow believers that they would have their own personal devotion time and that they would be reading the Bible and they would be praying. But you know, as we've discussed in some of these other episodes, that's a struggle for for a lot of us to keep those things up the way that we ought to. And so we shouldn't assume everyone's on solid ground there. It, it always right. needs to be reminded and right. brought back to mind and resurfaced in our brains that this happened. It's incredible. And so that being the case, if we really grab hold of this and we're excited about it, we ought to be sharing it with everyone. I mean, that's what we're commanded to do, but very often we don't. You know, Christians aren't right. out there sharing the gospel. They might share all kinds of other things, you know, what's a sin and what they don't like that someone's doing. Right. Or, what other doctrines I want you to conform to. Right. And they think they've got to fix every every little misconception all at once, and then the gospel often gets ignored. And well, so why do you the, think that is? One of the top things that I've heard people say, like, if I— if we talk about sharing your faith, mm -hmm. about witnessing to people, and if you were to pin people down and say, what's the reason that you're reluctant? There are several reasons, you know, fear of rejection and other things that people have. But the number one thing I hear people say is, well, I, I don't feel qualified. I don't know enough. What if they ask me this question? And this really answers it mm -hmm. because – there's always going to be things we don't know and ask, and there's always going to be things maybe someone's wanting to pin us down on. Yeah. But if, if we're just strictly talking about the gospel, it is, uh, it's something that uh, a brand new Christian should be able to express to some degree. Not everybody's able to gather that together and articulate it just as clearly. Right. But, but the message of the gospel, Jesus came, he died for your sins, he was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. And here is how you get in on that. Here is how you obey the gospel. Yeah. Uh, and we should be able to very quickly, very early in our Christian journey, be able to walk somebody through what we've just walked through. Yeah, and, and I wonder maybe if those things aren't connected. You know, we just said that we go on in our faith and these things become old hat. We don't go over them often enough. And I think it's funny, you know, you see these new Christians and they're the ones who are on fire and they're the ones who are sharing the gospel because it's fresh in their minds. They've just accepted it themselves. They they know yeah. it. It's in the forefront of their minds. And it's not until 
they allow it to, to sink into the background that they maybe lose some of that fire. And so maybe that's the benefit of constantly bringing this to mind and constantly being reminded is that maybe we can keep hold of that, that initial excitement a little better than we do. Yeah. I think, you know, there's issues at play with this. You know, one is like, what are people doing outside of the church building mm-hmm. with their unbelieving friends and, and that, but, but I certainly think it, it, at least the motivation for this, I think it begins in our pulpits. It, it, it begins in our leadership yeah. with how we talk. So well, I, I guess what I'm saying is that as preachers, we should preach the gospel more often. Mm-hmm. We absolutely should. And, and just, I mean, I, I guess kind of a question that we could ask is, it's simple. And anyone who's a Christian ought to be able to share this. And, and very often, like you said, people say, well, I'm not prepared to do that. Mm-hmm. But do you think that's really usually the case that they really don't feel prepared? Or is this just sort of an excuse that we make because we're uncomfortable? Yes, I think it's both. both. I, I think it's. I think it could be both. I think there's people that aren't prepared, but I think mm-hmm. I think they're they're not prepared because we haven't prepared them. Okay. They're, they're they're not prepared because we when we come in on Sunday morning and we sit in the pew and we listen to a sermon. There's so many different things that we could talk about. Yeah. So as a preacher, I, I feel partly my responsibility is to preach the whole oracles of God. Second, you know, I feel like, man, there's uh, contemporary issues that Mm. are hot button issues that need to address. People need to be equipped with. There are wonderful, encouraging stories. There's, uh, you know, we always have people that feel compelled to delve in like pop psychology and relational things. And, and there's all this stuff that we could address that the Bible addresses. That's biblical, but all this kind of where my, my position's evolving, all preaching should come back to the gospel. Yeah. If I'm preaching a story about David and Goliath, right? The story is not, oh, look how cool David was. I'm David. I can conquer my sin. Mm-hmm. The story is that the greater David, Jesus, conquered sin. Yeah. And, and, and so what our temptation is, is, to, is our preaching and our, te- and our hearing is to make it about us and not about him. Yeah. Think, and and so those good. stories easily go back to the gospel. Uh, you can preach, you know, Genesis 3, sin, and Jesus is the one that was going to crush the head of the serpent. Uh, Abraham and Isaac, Jesus is the one who is the greater Isaac, you know, and, and so on and so on, is, is we need to repeat the gospel so people are so familiar with it that they can't help but to know it well. Yeah, and, and maybe if you're hearing this and, and you have found yourself reluctant to share because you don't feel prepared— Maybe what's holding you back is not so much not being able to say Jesus died for your sins. It's the fear of all these follow-up questions that you might be called to answer. And, right. and maybe my response to that would be those aren't very important until they've accepted the gospel. You right. know, a lot of these questions that we get when we share Christ with someone like that, they want to point out these things in their lives that are contrary to what they perceive Christian lifestyle looks like. And, and maybe they're right about that, and they want you to answer all those things before they've accepted the gospel. And I don't think we need to do that. I think it's perfectly legitimate to say, listen, I hear what you're saying, but that doesn't matter right now. The question is, here's what I'm telling you, that Jesus died for your sin and rose again. Do you believe that or not? And if you believe it, let the chips fall where they may. It's got to mean what it means, but it doesn't matter unless you believe that. And we can deal with those other peripheral doctrines. You know, it's it's amazing. You know, Paul says, when I was with you, I resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yeah. Now, I wasn't there, but I'm guessing he preached other subject matters besides the crucifixion. He, He preached the death, burial, resurrection. But I'm I'm guessing he had other Bible lessons and and other leadership things that he taught to the church and and lots of other things that he taught. But I think the idea is that the thrust yeah. was always substitutionary death. Yeah. And and it should I think that should be our thrust. We should resolve to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, so that's from a leadership standpoint. Uh, if you're a church member, you can't control the narratives from the pulpit, but um, but you can dwell on the on the gospel on a daily basis. Sure, and I think as a Christian, if this is on the forefront of your mind, you're going to take whatever sermon that you hear and and sort of filter it through that lens of how this applies to the gospel, right? I mean, we yeah. can almost do that for ourselves. Sure, it, it needs to come from the pulpit, but as a Christian, if our focus is on Christ, if we've affixed our eyes on Jesus, 
we're kind of bringing it back to that in our own minds or, or we ought to be. I think so. I, I think that should be a daily thing. It, it, I think that's part of our devotion. I think that's the purpose of spiritual disciplines yeah. is to bring our minds back to the, the, to the cross. The Lord's Supper, right? I mean, we're, we're remembering what, what was done for us that right. should refresh us every week is in terms of bringing that to mind, you know, and, right. and helping us to remember those things. And so – if it's if it's simple, anyone can share. Okay, Jesus died and was buried and rose again. Well, so what about that? You know, that's going to be the next question. Anybody who kind of bites on this, okay, well, now we have to obey the gospel. But what does that mean? Right, right. You know, and and that's where in a, in a lot of evangelical Christianity, the idea is missed. It's well, the gospel is true. Believe the gospel, but the Bible also speaks of getting in on it. Right. And, of, and, of obey. You know, and, and that I love that passage in Second Thessalonians one. You know, Jesus is coming again. He's coming to judge two classes of people, mm -hmm. those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel. Yeah. And that, that, that two questions emerge. We, we've answered the first. What is the gospel? Yeah. The second question is, how do I obey that propositional truth? How do I obey that? Right. And this is kind of where you're going to start to meet with some opposition. A, a great many professing Christians could get together in a room and have a, a wonderful conversation about what the gospel mm -hmm. is, and we could all agree on that very well. Where we're going to start to differ a little bit is on how, how okay, well, now how do I get in on it? How do I obey it? Right. Because well, a great many denominations, as soon as you believe that, well, you're done. Well, even the idea of obeying the gospel would be an absurdity sure. to, to some of them. They, they, they never considered yeah. that the gospel is something to be obeyed or that we should have uh, an obedient right. faith. Or, or if they have, they've equated obedience with some sort of works-based salvation. Right, right. So... I, I think that's a great point is in what we're talking about. Talk, we're talking about gospel commandments, not mm. works commandments. Sure. And Jesus even even said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom. He who does the will of my Father. Right. It, and, and there are gospel commandments, mm -hmm. things that uh, they're life and death. Right? Right. Unless you do this, you're out. Uh, very clear. Right. Uh, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Uh, yeah. That's urgent. Right, unless you repent, you'll likewise perish. Um, unless you confess me before my Father, I uh, confess me before man. I won't confess you before my Father in heaven. Yeah. And so we had three life and death statements there. Which one's right? They're all right. They're all right. Now it only takes one scripture to make something right. Now that doesn't still answer. How do we get in on that? Because Romans six is where we go for right. that. Right. Right. Uh, Romans six tells us about obedience to the gospel, mm -hmm. that we obey the gospel, that we connect with the gospel in our baptism. That's the point in time where we're united in the mind of God, uh, in the death, in the burial, in the resurrection. And that's very clear uh, in Romans in Romans chapter 6. You've, you've died, you've been buried in baptism, and you've been raised to walk in a new uh, type of life. Right. And, and I think that's a really clear picture. And I think that really points to, it, it kind of meshes really well with how the Bible is written. Everything that God does fits together so beautifully. And, and what better moment to receive your salvation than the, the moment that points directly back to what Christ did right. for us. And, and, and what we're not saying, and this is, this is where we get hung up. This is where the arguments lie. Baptism is uh, the time of salvation. It is not uh, the way of salvation. Jesus saves. Right. Right. We're saved right. because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Yes. And there's nothing we can ever do to contribute to our own justification. Right. But it is the time of salvation, the time yeah. where we unite with the gospel, the time where we come under the blood. Yeah. To obey those gospel commands is not an earning. Of course, allowing yourself to be baptized, of course, that doesn't earn you heaven. It doesn't right. earn you forgiveness. It's absurd to suggest that it might. Those aren't um, law commands. And, no. and so like when the Bible talks about we're not saved by works, it means that, hey, you can't by a measure of keeping the laws that God gave, the mm -hmm. moral laws that God gave, you can't be saved by keeping those. You can never earn God's favor because you've broken the law. You're a lawbreaker, Matt. Right. Uh, and James says, if you've broken one law, you're guilty of breaking all of it. So you'll never earn God's favor by law keeping. But baptism is uh, a gospel commandment, not a law commandment. Sure. And and you could you could almost make the same sort of works argument for anything. You know, I agree. Praying a, a sinner's prayer could be called a work if baptism's a, even more so because that's something you're actively doing rather than submitting. 
Jesus to be said, uh, Jesus said, this is the work that you have to right. believe in me. So Jesus talks about belief as a work. Now, obviously, yeah. that can't mean the same thing that uh, Romans means and uh, and other scriptures mean, like in Galatians, when it's not by works of flesh that man will be saved. Right. Jesus said believing is a work that you do. You know, that's something incredible about the gospel is once we're confronted with it, it, it transforms us one way or the other. Either we're going to be softened by it, we're going to be pierced by it and accept it, or we're going to harden ourselves to it and reject it. And so Jesus talked about basically that you're either with him or against him. There's no middle ground. And once you've heard Amen. the gospel of Jesus, you're no longer sitting on the fence. You're either for him or you or you're actively against him. And there is a work. There there is something special, something supernatural about the gospel that you and I don't have in and of ourselves that that is not done, that's not accomplished with any other speech. And, uh, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I am not the power of God unto no. salvation. My or, uh, ornate uh, ability, uh, however I might be able to communicate. That's not the power. The gospel's the power. Right. If we are trying all these other things but the gospel to convert people, we're making it as hard as we're afraid it's going to be um, because you and I aren't going to argue someone into accepting Christ. We're not going to use logic and, and rationality to convince someone to do that. It's the gospel that's going to pierce their heart, and that's what's going to make the difference. And, and we're not commanded to make everyone accept the gospel. We're commanded to to preach it to everyone. You know, we share that, mm -hmm. let it do the work. Um, and if they're rejecting it, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Christ. And he told us that people would. Yeah. And, and so we've talked about the gospel for unbelievers. Yep. But this continues to be the power of God for salvation yeah. after we believe, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's the power of salvation for all who believe. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it continues to have a saving effect, uh, a benefit to our own lives. And, and I guess what my point here is that most problems in the church are gospel problems, mm -hmm. can be boiled down to a gospel problem. Maybe, you know, and I, maybe someone would say that's an oversimplification of things. I don't think that it is. If that's the foundational truth of the church, you know, if, if there's no resurrection, we have no hope, then everything comes back to that. And I think that, you know, we've talked about that for unbelievers, but it's also true for people of other faiths. It's, it's true for the, all these different denominational splits that have occurred over the years. It's true for Christians who just aren't growing and who, who remain very shallow in their faith. It can all be boiled down to the gospel. I think it absolutely can be. And, and, and we see that like uh, when Paul writes to the Galatian churches, right? I'm, I'm amazed that you were so quickly deserting the gospel uh, for another gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Right. And, and he harps on the gospel, right? It's Jesus who saves. It's Jesus who saves. And uh, and 1 Corinthians 15, I'm going to remind you of the gospel. In Romans 6, hey, you shouldn't keep on sinning because you united with Christ in the gospel. And so how often does even Paul have to call churches back to the simple message of the gospel? I'm sure most of us have experienced this in our own life. I mean, you, you, you're not in the word, you're not bringing those truths to the front of your mind. And we, we begin to drift. I mean, those things keep us grounded. They keep our focus in the right place. And I think there's some scriptural backing for this idea that, that maintaining that faith is what, is what keeps us under the blood of Christ. I mean, you're not going to you know, we've, we've talked about there are different scriptures suggesting that there's a way to fall from grace, I mean, and, and lose your salvation. And that's not by not doing good enough, because it's never been about that. It's about losing your faith in the blood of Christ and, and walking away from that. And that's exactly Hebrews chapter 10. Yes. And so keeping this in mind, keeping this in front of our vision, you know, that's that's going to help us focus in the right place. That's going to keep our faith where it, where it needs to be and not allow it to drift and, and flicker out on us. Yeah. And, and I, so I think that because it's that important, like from a leadership perspective, we need to continually be drawing people back to the simplicity of the gospel. We need to keep continually. It's one reason why we observe the Lord's Supper each and every Lord's Day uh, is for that reminder of, yeah. of, of the gospel. Uh, and in fact, Paul said that that is a uh, proclamation of the gospel, that when we observe the Lord's Supper, it's a proclamation until he comes. And, and so sometimes I think our sin, personal sin, why people struggle, it's in part because they've lost sight of the gospel. I think that's absolutely right. And so kind of as we're going through this, you know, we mentioned a few things. So these people who've, who 
belong to other religions? In what way is that a gospel problem? I mean, that seems simple, but how would you say that? Well, one, it's a false gospel. Mm-hmm. It, it's not. It, it's not good news, you know. And and the idea is, if either either I or an angel from heaven brings to you a gospel other than what's already been preached, let him be accursed. Yeah. Uh, so it it's a false gospel to distort the gospel is a serious thing because you are in, in essence becoming a stumbling block to somebody. Yeah. And so uh, when we're handling the gospel, we ought to handle it with care. Right. And, and I think it's important to note, you know, a lot of these world religions, um, Islam or Hinduism or, or Buddhism, I mean, they have really no resemblance even to the gospel of Christ. No. And so, you know, in our experience, we were able to go to India a couple of years ago and and people who hear the gospel, it's like a totally clean slate. I mean, it, you're not coming to people who've heard about Jesus before. It's a completely right new thing that well, they're Well, religion hearing. is outside in, uh, you know, outside in. Yes. The gospel is inside uh, out. Right. And and, and the basic idea of religion, and we've plenty of times where Christianity demonstrates this religious vibe, right. where it's man trying to do something to earn God's favor and hoping mm-hmm. that if we're good enough, God will, whatever that God might be, will come in. And so, you know, we, when I was in India, you know, I asked a guy, how do you know if you're going to be saved? He was a Hindu, uh, and he, he said, I don't have any clue yeah. how he hopes that maybe he could possibly be good enough. And the message of the gospel is so totally different dealing with our sin problem. And the message of the gospel is you're never going to be good enough. That Jesus has taken care of your sin problem. He died in your place. That's why it's good news. Yeah. And I think that's life alter, especially again, you know, you go through some of these other world religions. There's not much there that lifts people up. You know, we witnessed that firsthand again in India where, where that Hindu system has, has, ground people into the dirt and then there's no value on on this life or on human life in general and that creates these horrible cultures that you have to live in and so many of their Man, problems a, are direct stem from that what a wonderful example you know they're they're really crushed by their caste system yes which, which is only loosely in place but still it still is in, in right. place the gospel says just the opposite yeah. right that you know in in that passage in romans 1 it's the gospel is the power of salvation for all who believe, for in it the righteousness of God is being revealed. And the idea of the gospel is there's now no distinction between Jew or Gentile, male or female, slave or free. The gospel mm-hmm. makes all people one and, and uh, one in Christ. And so the gospel demolishes all those boundaries that we said, sure. talk about the, the cure for racism that's so prevalent in the world today. Yeah. This, that is a gospel problem. It is a gospel problem. And even, you know, these denominational uh, differences that we've talked about, that kind of comes back to the gospel. And that can be tricky because most people who belong to some, some form of Christian church will say, well, I, I know the gospel. I've heard the gospel. I've responded mm-hmm. to the gospel. But you have to take each of those people and compare, okay, well, let's compare your response to what we read about in the scripture. And if they don't match up, you haven't obeyed the gospel. And that must mean you haven't understood the gospel, right? Well, that's so a perversion. it still comes back to the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, to, to miss out on how to get in on it is a perversion of the gospel. Yeah. And I think that's harder to deal with. I, I would much rather talk to a, a total unbeliever or someone who who belongs to one of these radically different religions because I think our our jobs easier there. So many people have have followed a false light and they and they really truly they love Jesus. They believe that that they have done what's necessary to get in on the gospel and yet they've just missed it. And and I think that's one of the the devil's best strategies out there. He doesn't have to make up a whole new thing, you know, a whole cloth. He just takes the truth and twists it just enough, just enough that those who are seeking God miss him in, in, in those lies. And so it's so important to share the gospel accurately and to always, always, always take it back to the scripture because the scripture is going to tell a clear story. And, and, and then the, continually remind believers of of the gospel yeah we need to continually be brought back to the fact that jesus died for my sins that he was buried and on the third day he resurrected so that i can uh, not i don't have to live under the fear of condemnation or of of death yeah and, and that's, he's taken that power of death satan who, who wields that fear of the power of death over us, he's he's taken that away. Yeah, and I think that's really kind of that other gospel problem we talked about, which are Christians who 
aren't necessarily producing fruit. They're not growing. They're, they're just as shallow in their faith as maybe they were 10 years ago or, or 20 years ago. And, yeah. and that's a gospel problem. Yes, it's, 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 it's that they failed to appreciate the beauty and the wonder of the gospel and what it means. So, you know, it, it, it is this, there's this textbook element to it, right? This is a histor these are historical facts yeah. that, that we read about. And, and then we can speak about it broadly applying to all the world. Anybody can be saved. The gospel is available to all, all people, mm -hmm. uh, all nations, all people. But it means something for Jason Cole because, uh, you know, so this becomes a very personal, intimate thing that all my, all my sin, every one of them, was on Jesus on the cross and he bore the penalty. That is never old news. No, and, and we shouldn't allow it to become that. And listen, I get we're human beings. You know, you can't you can't live your life in this ever present state of awe where you're just sitting there in amazement of what Christ has done. You have to live your life. You have to go about your day, you know, and, and those those things sort of ebb and flow in our minds, but it should never leave our minds. And it should be the lens the through which we view they, everything else. The reason why they ebb uh, is that momentary when we're not in that. Yeah. Uh, and and at, at the very least, the impetus for worship is reverence and awe sure. of what God has done. Uh, that 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 leads us to, to worship. Yes. Uh, th that leads us to away from sin. It's impossible for me to be consumed with the gospel and be consumed with sin at the same time. Yeah. It is not possible. And those and those sort of maybe peaks, if we want to call them that, that time of worship where you're just where you just adore God and, and thank him for what he's done here in, in Christ, that should drive us then to to go out and do something about it. Right. Christ died for our sins. He saved me when I could never have saved myself. So what? So what should yeah. I be doing? Uh, well, we're going to talk everybody. About we're going to we're going to talk about it, and and I think we've we've talked before, Matt, about the idea of uh, out the overflow yeah. of the heart, the mouth speaks, and that's not just true of bad language and bad things. It's true of good things. Mm -hmm. So when we fill our minds with the gospel, it is not going to be it's not going to be effort. We do put effort. It's not going to be hard for us to share the gospel with people. It is going to be overflow. Yeah. And that's really what Jesus was driving at, you know, at the Sermon on the Mount. It was it wasn't here's what you do and that's what's important. It's you be the right kind of person. You get your heart aligned with God and it's going to result in you doing what you ought to be doing. You're right. not going to be able to help yourself. You know, I think we've talked a little bit before about this this example of, you know, encountered some guy one time who who had just gotten a free hot dog like outside a giant eagle or something. They gave him a free hot dog. He told like four people in my site, oh man, there's free hot dogs over here. He was so excited that he got something for free. He wanted to let other people in on it. And that's a stupid hot dog, right? We've got eternal life. We, we've got forgiveness of all of our sins free for the taking. And, and we don't care enough about it to tell people. That's yeah. crazy to me. And, yeah. it, and it really means, I think, that we don't grab hold of it. Or, or internalize it, right? Personalize it. Yeah. And, and there's something to this, Matt, when, you know, when I'm talking to you about the gospel, if you were an unbeliever, you're not, and you're looking into my eyes and you're reading my heart, yeah. right? You're, you see something about, do I believe this thing or not? Mm -hmm. so, so not only are you, are you going through the message and processing the message that I'm giving, you're looking at the heart and the eyes of somebody that believes that with every fabric of his being and yeah. that is striving for that to impact my life. I think there's something to that. Sure. And here's another here's another effect of someone who's just centered on the gospel all the time. You're going to have that joy about it. You're yeah. going to have that excitement. Nobody wants to listen to you tell them about Jesus when you're just as miserable as they are, if not more so. And if we really apprehend what Christ has done, how can we walk around and be miserable in that way? We're, we're going to have that joy that, that Paul talks about. And that doesn't always mean laughing and being super happy all the time, but it's just this solid, rock solid peace and assurance that we've got mm. what Christ has offered us. I love that. Um, I think, I think that is, I think that's a reason why there's a lack of joy mm -hmm. is, is we lose sight of that. We've been, we've been redeemed from our sin. I, yeah. I can't help you. Like I read uh scriptures like that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 has become one of my favorite uh, verses. God made him who knew no sin mm -hmm. to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That is just amazing concept. And, 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 and just the thought of reading that fills my heart with joy. Yeah. And, and so many Christians don't 
don't come across that way. In fact, many, many of us seem pretty angry and, and maybe that's why we're more apt to sort of condemn someone's behavior than we are to share the gospel with them because we've allowed ourselves to feel surrounded and outmatched and overwhelmed and hopeless. Listen, we've won. Like Christ has already won. Yeah. If that's the case, if you believe that, how can we be so angry about what's going on in the world? Of course, the world is going to act like the world. Yeah. The, the solution is not to get angry and yell about it. The solution is to tell them about Jesus. We're going to convert them one at a time. Yeah, and that kind of goes where we've been dancing around the whole time mm -hmm. is the evil in the world today. The solution is the gospel. Yeah. One person at a time. It's not politicians. It's not Republican or Democrat. It's not a new policy. All that stuff. All, and I know this is this is like my soapbox with this. Right. All the politics stuff comes after the culture has been set. Like if you'd go back to 1900 and say, "I'm going to pass child labor laws," and and I, well, there's no chance you do that. Culture wasn't right for it. Yeah. You know, and 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 and, and so politics, what they could legally pass in Congress was a reflection of the culture of the day. And it's just this vicious cycle. The gospel really changes and trans really makes a difference. It absolutely does. And, and so how do, how do race issues stop? How does uh, the, the sexual perversion, how do we, how do we deal with that and all that's going on? Mm -hmm. I think that if we, as the church spent more time on the gospel. Yeah. Because that treats the cause. You know, you shut down someone's agenda. That's just the effect. That's just the symptom. The They're cause, doing what they yes. are expected to do. Yeah. And the gospel is going to be the cure for that on a personal level. And then eventually you get enough people on a national on level, a on, on a worldwide yeah. level. Um, and that's how we do it. And the gospel is the power for us to do that. And that's really what the church ought to be doing. You know, we're the light of the world, Christ says. That's how we are the light of the world. And and I think some of our conversations, uh, we'd benefit from reminding one another of of, of this. And, yeah. uh, and you know, that passage in Thessalonians where he talks about the second coming, right? Jesus is coming again. And there's the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise, right? And then he says, encourage one another with these words, you know, the, the, the hope that we have, I think we need to remind one another constantly of what we have in Christ. Yeah. Remind one another, hey, you're going to heaven, man. Uh, and, and Jesus is coming again. That's good news. And, and I think we need to talk more about the gospel. And I love to dive into all these deep peripheral things. And I like to study out these uh, different things in scripture and it matters, but it doesn't matter to the same degree that the gospel matters. Yeah, absolutely not. That that is that is the thing. And and just like Jesus said, you know, it's he who does the will of my father who will enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, the will of the father is to to go forth and preach the gospel to everyone that's and right. teach them to obey all that that Christ commanded. And so that's what we got to do. And, th and that is the major thing that we can do. It's the most powerful thing that we can do. And so I really think that as the church we ought to focus on that a little better. Yeah, and, and I think we kind of are about out of time here on this one. Yeah, I just think kind of in close, I just encourage anybody to take beyond the facts and take some moments uh, in your day and ponder the gospel. You know, just just take a quiet moment and 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 just think about the depth of the fact that your sin has been taken care of, and it's because Jesus was who was a just man, was fully God and fully man, died for you. And then he resurrected from the grave and, and, and the implications of that, the implications of your sin and your guilt and God redeeming you in grace, uh, take some time and ponder that. And I, I think if you do that, you're going to find yourself wanting to share that with someone else. And so we really encourage you all to do that. We, we thank you so much for listening. And uh, as always, we're glad to have all of you with us. So if you want to check out this podcast or any other episodes, you can find this all on our website at lakemountchurchofchrist.org. Uh, you can also subscribe on uh, Spotify or iTunes or Amazon or Audible or a bunch of other places. So please do that. Whatever you're listening on, click subscribe, click like, uh, give us a good ranking. And, and as always, we welcome your comments and questions. We'd love to see those and, and respond to those as well as we're able to do that. So we will catch you all next time. Mm -hmm.